Christopher Nolan is a director who you might know. In an industry full of remakes, reboots, franchises, and cinematic universes, he's one of a very small handful of modern filmmakers who are given the freedom to make films with full creative control while still managing to dominate at the box office. And while Nolan's 20-year career has covered a wide range of themes and genres, there's only one thing that manages to be more consistent in Nolan's filmography than his casting choices, and that's his clear fascination with the concept of time. Across all of his films, Nolan has proven time and time again that he's capable of slowing it down, speeding it up, reversing it, racing against it, transcending it, and shattering it completely. In this video, I'm going to discuss how Christopher Nolan uses time to motivate how he structures his films. A potential spoiler warning for those of you who haven't seen Memento, Dunkirk, or Inception. Come back after you've watched those. A recurring pattern through Nolan's filmography is that he structures his films to present time through a particular perspective, which often leads to his films being presented in a non-linear structure. I approach the structure from a very mathematical and geometrical point of view. A lot of diagrams, a lot of careful planning. That was Christopher Nolan describing his approach to structuring a movie. Nolan's second feature film, Memento, is essentially the story of a man with memory loss, seeking revenge for the murder of his wife. Now, a murder revenge story is something we've all seen hundreds of times before, but a murder revenge film told backwards and out of order is what makes Memento so innovative. Leonard, Memento's protagonist, suffers from enterograde amnesia. Therefore, his perception of time is out of order. So, Nolan takes the chronological structure of the film and rearranges it so the story is told out of order as well, the same way Leonard himself is experiencing it. This way of structuring a story is called a designing principle. The designing principle is a term coined by John Truby in his book, The Anatomy of Story, in which he describes the designing principle as the overall strategy for how you will tell your story. This is how Nolan himself describes the structure of Memento. So, okay, what do you have? You have the beginning of the film here. Um, what's the best way to draw it? The best way to draw it is as a hairpin, like that. That's basically the end of the movie. This stuff is the black and white stuff. This is color. And this is running backwards as a series of jumps. And what we do is we cut between the two the whole way through. So we alternate scene here, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there. Scene there and they meet towards the end of the film. But you have other material that actually precedes the beginning of the black and white scenes. And the gap between the beginning of the black and white scenes and this long-term memory stuff, some of which is color, some of which is black and white, um, that gap is unspecified. The lead character, because of his particular condition, he can never know how long that's been. He's cut loose in time, effectively. And it's this type of originality and innovation that firmly put Nolan's name on the map very early on in his career. Creating films with an unconventional perception of time is something that Nolan would continue to revisit throughout his filmography. Even up to the present in his latest film, Dunkirk, Nolan innovates with a nonlinear structure told from three different perspectives, air, land, and sea. Nolan uses this type of nonlinear and multi-layered narrative to create tension within the structure of the narrative itself. And while this may sound complex and overwhelming, it's really quite simple and brilliant. The layout of the individual plot threads, which are all taking place over different periods of length and time, are structured so that they build tension. Due to this, many moments that did not happen simultaneously or in direct succession are written and edited so that they appear to have done so. This clever structure allows what could have been a rather meandering story to build its tension much more cooperatively between the plot threads. The first example of the stories interacting is the scene where Mr. Dawson rescues the shivering soldier who's stranded at sea and adamantly reluctant to go back to Dunkirk, but we don't know why, instantly implanting the question in the audience's head. Later on in the film during the Mole storyline, we see the same character totally fine and unharmed. This creates tension because we know the ship is going to sink at some point, but we don't know how or at what cost. Structuring the film this way gives the audience enough information to be leaning at the edge of their seats, 
This multi-layered narrative draws similarities to one of Nolan's most definitive films, Inception. The majority of Inception takes place across five different levels of the dream world. Reality, the van chase, the hotel, the fortress, and limbo, with each level having substantial effects on the next, always complicating, building, and heightening. And in the same way as Dunkirk, the interaction of each of the levels is what creates the tension within the narrative. When we see something happen on one level, we as an audience are anticipating how it's going to impact the next level of the dream. It also strengthens the overall conflict and stakes for the characters of the story. Christopher Nolan's love for non-linear storytelling and his unique approach to the concept of time is largely what's led him to create some of the most mind-bending and boundary-pushing films in recent memory. Many of the greatest artists have played with the forms and limitations of their medium, and Nolan has never shied away from doing so, resulting in him becoming one of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful directors of all time. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, subscribe and consider supporting us over on Patreon. It really helps build this channel and you can get exclusive access to behind the scenes content, early access to videos, as well as being able to vote on what video we release next.